Hey y'all, my name's Megan. I'm a homeschool mom of two and welcome to my channel. There's so much dancing that happens in this house when I'm by myself filming these videos. Is that like my nervous tick, do you think? Like, oh no, I feel nervous. What do I do? Oh, my shoulders are moving. What's happening? Anyways. In today's video, I want to talk to you guys about how our homeschool month of September went, tell you what worked, what didn't, and give you all the recommendations for what we're going to be doing in October. So let's sit back, relax, and get down to business. Okay, before we begin, I do need to say, like, we're officially in spooky season, y'all. Like, hoo -doo -hoo, who's excited about the spooky season? Uh, I know that I am. And I can't wait to share with you guys all of the goofy little things that we're going to be doing for the month of October. But before we get into that, I just want to go over some general feelings for how I think the month of September went for us. And you guys, I'm so excited to really share that the month of September has been so good to our little homeschooling family. I can't express to you how wonderful it's been to find this YouTube community. Like y'all are awesome. And then hooking that back up to Instagram and seeing everyone's stories and what they're doing every day and really feeling like I'm not not just alone in my little home in my rural Indiana trying to educate my children but connecting to you guys and seeing that there's so many other moms and educators out there who are doing the same thing and having the same struggles that has just been absolutely life-changing for me so I really want to say thank you to you guys I'm just shocked and honored that anyone takes time out of their busy day to watch these videos so with that being said I'm gonna Keep going because I know you're busy and you have lots of things to do. Anyways, something else that has happened for our homeschool family this month is that we have actually made friends in town. Like, woo hoo hoo! Yes, thank you. I stepped out of my comfort zone and created a Facebook group for my town's homeschoolers and set up a meet and greet and one family showed up and I'm not even disappointed in that because it was the family that was supposed to show up, right? Um, and our kids have just hit it off. Our styles are similar and I'm so grateful to have an in-person community being built as well as this online community, but I know I could never have done that without the confidence um, of finding you guys first. So again, like tons of gratitude. The other thing about how we're feeling about homeschool is that I'm feeling so much more confident about who we are as homeschoolers and how we homeschool. And that's been huge for me. This is our fourth year homeschooling and we've definitely fallen into or attempted uh, every category of homeschooling that there is, kind of trying on all of those different styles. And and we have finally just found our eclectic mishmash um, that works for us and we feel good in. So if you're new to homeschooling and you're struggling and you're looking um, for your own identity, just note that keep on going and looking and searching for that community and that identity. And man, this year we've just hit the sweet spot and it's just happened. And I know this could be like pride before the fall and next month's update video could just be like, who am I? What's going on? But as of now, we're feeling really confident in who we are and what we're doing and where this homeschool is going. Okay, so that aside, let's talk about what worked for us in the month of September. So the number one thing that really worked for us this month has definitely been our mushroom unit study. Do, 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 do. I'm just holding this book up as reference. It is one of the field guides that we've been using. If you haven't seen my video on the mushroom unit study, I will link that below. Our enthusiasm for mycology with this unit has just tripled. I mean, we've been in the forest at least once a week. We have been digging in the dirt, looking for all of the different fungi everywhere. The kids are into it. My husband's into it. We've gotten our friends into it. Um, and on that note, I want to make a huge recommendation, and that is for the Seeker app. I'm going to put an image of it here. And if a link is available, I'll put that below as well. The Seeker app 
app has been game changing in the mushroom identifying uh, game. I'm going to use that word twice. Um, it is amazing. So it's by iNaturalist. It's endorsed by National Geographic. I mean, it's, it's vetted as being a great app. And basically, it uses your phone to scan um, your area, to scan the uh, object you're trying to ID and give you its best possible identification. It's fun. You can earn badges. Uh, but what's really cool is it will take the collected information of your local area, as well as the season and temperatures, to show you what are the most likely or most common identifications for your region or specifically your zip code. It is so cool. I mean, it has been just amazing to take on the trails. My daughter's knowledge of mushrooms Rooms, name identification has just increased dramatically um, over the month of September. We just can't stop doing it. And as a matter of fact, like we don't really plan to. I haven't planned any major unit studies for October. I have a miniature one that I'll be talking to you guys about next week. But we're really going to stick with mushrooms as long as that interest level is there. And as long as the weather continues to hold up with us being able to go outdoors and adventure as much as we have been. Oh, also, uh, I got my hair did so you guys don't have to stare at my like roots or like wonder like, God dang, what's this girl got going on? I'm feeling pretty good about that, kind of channeling my inner Joan Jet, you know? The next thing that has really worked for us for the month of September continues to be the DART program from Brave Rider and <laughs> I am so grateful that that program is working out as well as it has because it was expensive. We didn't go with like a month by month a la carte dart. We paid for everything up front. It was almost $300 for 12 months program plus getting the writer's jungle and a lot of the different resources. And it has really been worth it, you guys. We have loved the books and I am loving um, the lessons. It's super simple. I, I should do a video on that, give you guys a good review of the DART program. But September's book was Rickshaw Girl. And I have to tell you how much we loved this book. It is set in contemporary Bangladesh and it is about a girl who is trying to find ways to help her family earn money. It was a quick read and my daughter was just really into it. When we finished it, the first thing she asked was like, uh, when is Rickshaw Girl 2 coming out? And of course, like there isn't a Rickshaw Girl 2, but I did find off of the author's Instagram page that they are coming out with a movie or have come out with a movie, or a movie is on the horizon. I don't know. We're pretty excited about that. And if we can find it, we're going to get our hands on it. That's for sure. But the DART program just allows me to really make um, an open and go. I can do just very minimal prep and just know that we're going to get in some excellent conversation talking about grammar and writing styles while we're reading the book. So the Dart book for October is going to be Skunk and Badger. And this one my daughter has been super excited about ever since we attended the Brave Writer online like pep rally for announcing what the books would be this year. She has done nothing but talk about Skunk and Badger. So she's so excited for us to finally crack this book open and get after it. So I'm really excited for that. In the world of literature, we are also in the midst of reading PAX as just kind of a read aloud for us. This is by Sarah Pennypacker. Like, wow, I knew from the back of the book that it was going to be a bit of a tearjerker, but I didn't see that it was going to make me feel emotional like three pages in. So um, if you're ready to have some feelings, uh, feel the feels this October or this fall, definitely pick up one of these. And um, I just... I don't know it's been really good and I'll let you guys know if it ends if I if I feel like it's worthy of such high praise when we finish the book as I do uh, now also we are continuing with our block scheduling that has just worked out really well for us to take our core subjects and do them every other day and um, has just been it's made things run smoothly we know what we need to be doing that day and it's minimalized my planning 
with that we have really switched to school like schooling like in an official sense um four days a week and we're taking fridays to do like a fun or a free friday so this week with friday being well today when this video is released october 1st we will be decorating the house for halloween probably picking up some pumpkins just doing some fun things inevitably learning gets wrapped into that because that's just life and we will still do a lot of reading on those days as well it's usually also ends up being a field trip day like we will maybe go somewhere out of our uh, more immediate area to go do something fun and we're just really enjoying those fun or free Fridays all right the last thing I want to add to the category that I'll label as like things that worked for September is definitely my new planner. And this is from Megan at School Nest. I will put this down below a link to her Amazon. I am shocked by how much I like this planner. Not, not that I should be shocked. Her products are great. I don't mean it like that. I'm just not always the planniest of planners. Um, and it's really got me shook. And the number one thing that I love that I didn't even think I would enjoy as much has been like the week at a glance business. I have really enjoyed just jotting in everything that I know we have going on, not really what we're going to be doing for school, but like appointments or play dates or places I know we need to be and when. Just being able to see that all in one place has been pretty amazing. And again, a suggestion from you guys, I know that um, there's a YouTuber who went ahead and spiral bound her planner because she has the same one. I think I'm going to try to do the same thing. So if that happens, I'm going to post it on Instagram for you guys. Um, and you could see if I like that as well. Okay, so what didn't work for us this month? And I don't even want to frame it in that language of like, what didn't work. We just had some really excellent resources that have been very effective for us in the past that for whatever reason, were just not a good fit for where we are today. And kind of that piece about gaining confidence, we could just really easily and with confidence make that change and say, this isn't working for us. And we just make a change. So when I say that we stopped using a few of the things that were kind of our tried and true homeschool spines in the past, please don't take that as me not endorsing these products or programs as good because they're wonderful. It's just they weren't fitting our needs um, in the this season. Get it? Because it's fall, but also people say that in this season of life, in this season of homeschool, those things just weren't cutting it for us right now. So the biggest change that we've made, which is something that I had discussed in last month's update video, is that we did go ahead and move away from the Math with Confidence program. And this was by Kate Snow. I love this program. We used Math with Confidence for kindergarten all last year. We did the entire program. Program, um, from beginning to end and it was really wonderful and I guess it just did its job a little too well because my oldest daughter her math skills um, were just right above like what I thought first grade math with confidence could provide for her she definitely needed something a little advanced so and thank goodness I make these videos because I got so many amazing suggestions from you guys so again like a huge shout out and thank you and I'm going to tell you what we decided to go with so we did go ahead and switch to uh, dimensions math and this is um, a Singapore math program the main reason that I made the decision to switch to dimensions is because I know that it has a reputation uh, for being a little bit more advanced or the Singapore math method does in general I also made the decision after watching several excellent YouTube videos and really getting a feel for the program I'm going to link um, one of the videos below that I really liked that really made the difference for me and that's from Ode to Abode. You should go follow her anyways if you don't already but I will link her flip through of the Singapore math curriculum dimensions math below so that you can go um, and kind of see what it's all about. One of the things that I loved about it is that you can buy the programs in halves. 
haves. So each program comes with an A and a B, kind of as if they were being presented as semesters. And so I was able to go through the first grade curriculum, both A and B, and look at it and know that we did not need uh, Dimensions Math 1A. We just didn't. We do not have any holes in our knowledge in anything that's covered in 1A. Um, I believe that this curriculum spirals, so I'm not too worried about that if there was something that we missed. So I was able to just pick up 1B, which I really felt like was appropriate for where my oldest daughter is and for what she needs. Um, and with that being said, in terms of curriculum purchase, I did find them to be affordable. Now, I do need to go through the teacher's manual for this curriculum before we start using it. So in the meantime, I enrolled Winnie into Beast Academy Math, which is an online math program that is presented as being um, advanced, if you will. And that's what we've been doing just until I get my bearings and my plan as to where we're going with Dimensions Math. Um, and we really have enjoyed Beast Academy Math. Two things that I'm going to say about Beast Academy Math. Number one, I don't think that we're going to use it. Well, I know because I have already purchased dimensions. We are not going to use Beast Academy math as like the be all and end all. That is not our sole curriculum. It definitely feels more like practice and supplement. Now it is highly structured in the form that uh, you get lessons and then exams and you earn points, all of those things. But it just isn't giving direct instruction in a way that my oldest daughter can really benefit from. It's a lot of reading, which she struggles at. That is not her strong suit. So to go through and just do Beast Academy math where she would have to be doing a lot of the reading or have me right there with her doing the reading, I think would really um, be a struggle for her. The second thing that I want to say about Beast Academy Math really does go along with that reading element. Because it is so heavily like favors reading for instruction, I do sit down and do that with her. But I don't even mind. Like it's fun. The way they present it is challenging. It's generally puzzles or games. Um, and we've had a good time doing it together. I, I really like Beast Academy Math. Like it's changing the way um, that I see simple math, such as like looking at three digit numbers numbers, place value, um, subtraction, addition, kind of getting me kind of making that switch into the Singapore math mindset um, has been good for me as her teacher as well. Um, it's also very fun, very cute, very interactive. So we have enjoyed that. She also gets a big kick out of making her monster, which is the whole thing. So if you haven't checked out Beast Academy Math, it's worth trying it for a month and to see if it's for you or if your kiddos enjoy it. And it's also just really well presented and the interfacing is just top notch. This isn't like, did you guys have educational computer games when you guys, like when y'all were younger? Educational games back in the day, um, they were not this, okay? They were not this in-depth or this interactive or have this great of an interface. So we enjoy Beast Academy Math. It's just not going to be our baseline curriculum. It's probably going to be um, a for fun or occasional thing. We're just doing it regularly now until I can get my booty in gear to get Dimensions Math planned out for us. Okay, the next one is a big one for me. We quit co-op. It was a very casual co-op. That's the first thing I'm going to say. We just did science. It was two hours, three weeks out of the month. And it just wasn't like jiving for us. And that is totally okay. Everyone there was awesome. There was a lot of really cool stuff going on. So I don't have any negative things to say about anyone. It just wasn't what we were looking for. It was a lot more parental involvement than I was 
thinking it was going to be. Um, it was presented as definitely being kids and kids interacting and cooperating. And I just saw a lot more, like I said, parental participation that was limiting that kid to kid interaction. Um, and we were driving an hour each way to get that. So if I wasn't going to be getting that socialization cooperation element for my kiddo I just didn't see a reason to do it and plus my youngest she had no interest in going with the younger kids and it kind of became a situation where I was more or less like maintaining her right making sure she wasn't like destroying things um instead of you know, being able to enjoy myself at all. So I guess it's a little bit of a selfish reasoning on my end, but it was really stressful for me. Again, nobody was giving me grief or making me feel uncomfortable. It just wasn't the right fit for us. And even though we are not going to continue with co-op, um, I am going to continue with the book that we were using in co-op. And this is Tinker Active Science, grade two, second grade. Um, I'm going to link this below. It's really fun. It's a walkthrough, lots of engineering activities. Um, so a lot of hands on building or problem solving and using materials that you have around the house. It's a really great program. The more I get into it, I'll post a video about it or link some stuff if you guys are interested. It was $12.99 on Amazon. Um, and I really like that. So even though we won't be attending co-op anymore, um, we will continue to use this material. And again, this is all about that confidence piece. Like Megan last year or Megan two years ago, I would have really forced us to like proceed through this co-op um, environment and just like keep going, even though it wasn't working for us. And then we would have all been miserable and fighting and yada, 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 yada. I am so much more comfortable with just saying, great for you guys, not for us. We're going to do our own thing. And that's been, has made the difference this year with our homeschool. Okay, the other big thing that we have done is we are pausing our program, the Read with Bob or Learn to Read with Bob books. Um, I love that program. We're on the fourth set. I will link that below as well and is also listed in my first grade curriculum video. So if you want to know a little bit more about what I'm talking about, I'll put that video down below as well. We love that program. We will circle back around to it and pick it back up. But for right now, we just needed to change things up. Winnie, that's my oldest daughter, she is really into the computer right now. Um, and so I found a program through our new homeschool friends called Teach Your Monster to Read. I will link that down below. I have talked about it before in videos. It is another fantastic program that we are really, really enjoying. It is like a video game setup. And what I like about it is as the educator, I can go back and see her mastery level and results and know what sounds or blends she really needs to work on. And it's been pretty impressive to see her doing it because Winnie just lacks confidence in her reading abilities. She doesn't want to try or, well, I, I wouldn't say that. It's not that she doesn't want to try. It's that she doesn't want to get anything wrong. So she struggles with kind of putting herself out there. But when she's able to do this program, which is really a one-on-one, -on -one, right? It's just for her. Um, she's just doing a fantastic job. And I don't even think she realizes that she's reading as much as she is or uh, as at an, as advanced a level as she is. So I'm excited to see where Teacher Monster to Read takes her. And I just want to kind of let her finish that journey and then come back around to the um, Learning to Read with Bob books and let her see how much she actually has mastered. Okay, the last thing that I want to share with you guys is a resource that we have added this month and will be using into October. It is also from Megan at School Nest. I picked up some of her notebooks that she has. She creates these um, subject notebooks and they come in a variety of colors. We picked up the primary spelling notebook, the primary mathematics notebook, and also the science notebook. And you can get these really in whatever color works for you guys. They're not workbooks. It's nothing like that. But it is a way to organize kind of your scrap paper or your work that you need to write down. So, for example, with this primary spelling notebook, we have been using it 
to do like our practice spelling words in. It has these nice blank spaces where you can put your own words in and then the kiddos can practice them. Um, I know that a lot of people use like erasable boards for practicing writing and I think that's great. We've used those before, but I also like to have something that's pen or paper because I'll date them and I think it's nice for the kids to be able to see where they started in terms of handwriting and spelling um, and where they are now so that they can really see that hard work and like this dedication pays off um, in a better product. And we're not a product centered homeschool but it is nice for them to kind of see the relevance of their work. And we use the math book, which is great. It's like these gridded pages. I use these when we sit down to do our Beast Academy math together. So I use it as a place for me to explain like what we're doing in our math. Um, I love the gridded format. It's very easy for me to keep things organized and it helps to explain like the product of our process better um, or our sums or our outcomes. And our science notebook, we haven't cracked into just yet, but it looks a lot like this. But I thought this would be great when we are doing our science um, to be able to make observations and to journal a bit. And they just look good. They're clean. They're colorful. You can color organize it. If you have more than one kiddo doing these subjects at a time, you could put one kid all in the pink notebooks, one kid all in the green. You guys get the drift. I just think that her products are really great in their simplicity because it allows you to use it for whatever you need to use it for. And that's definitely what we have found to be true in our homeschool. So my biggest goal for our homeschool in October doesn't actually have anything to do with my kiddos or my students because I think that things are going really well um, for them and their current trajectory. So I'm just going to kind of keep on keeping on with that. The thing that's going to change is I'm actually going to try to put in more of a like professional development for myself. And I don't mean that I'm going to like go sit through some useless meeting. Like I was a public educator. I know that the term professional development is gross, uh, but maybe I mean more along the lines of taking care of um, my heart as a homeschool mama. I don't know what I'm trying to say to stay more centered and present every day with my kids. And one of the things I've been using for that is a gracious space by Julie Bogart. And these are daily reflections to sustain your homeschool commitment. It's just like a little book. Um, and this is the fall edition. She has different editions for this season. Of course, I'm like a huge Julie Bogart fan, if you weren't picking up on that already. But it is a secular, a de devotional, if you will. There's nothing faith-based in these. It isn't anything like that. But it is short little writings that she's done almost feels like journal entries um that's kind of about like the struggles of being a homeschool mom and I've really enjoyed that it's again they're quick there's no um homework for me in them other than the page or two of reading that I can do while I'm sipping a cup of coffee I am not that homeschool mom that gets up super duper early and has a lot of time to myself so it's nice that I just have this quick little thing that I can do to recenter myself before we get started for the day okay you guys that's all I have for you today takeaway September was pretty cool for us. Uh, not temperature wise, it was still like hot as Hades here. I'm ready for it to really feel like fall. And I'm hoping that as we transition into October, we really get those fall time temps so we can get to cuddling and reading and snuggling. Fall is definitely my favorite of the homeschool seasons. So I hope you guys had a great and wonderful and productive and fabulous September. And I wish the same for October as well. So, you know what? Was it perfect? No, baby. It was never gonna be. But is it done? Yeah, for today, it is. So until next time, bye!